يا أيها الناس قد جاءكم برهان من ربكم وأنزلنا وأنزلنا إليكم نورا مبينا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زني علما Juz 16 Also known as Juz Wala Alam The 16th Juz of the Quran contains three surahs it begins from Surah Al-Kaf, verse 75, and ends at Surah Taha, verse 135. The just begins from Surah Al-Kaf, verse 75, and in this just, Surah Al-Kaf completes at verse 110. The just begins with verses 75 and 78 of Surah Al-Kaf, where the continuation of the story of Musa al-Islam and Khidr is mentioned. Musa a.s. is annoyed with the incidents that are happening one after another, and he was questioning each incident. But Khadr a.s. asked Musa a.s. to be patient. At the end of their journey, Khadr a.s. explained the reasons for each of his actions. It is mentioned in verse 79 that Khadr a.s. said, The boat belonged to poor fishermen. I damaged it because there was the king on the shore who used to forcefully seize all seaworthy boats and leave the defected ones. So Khidr al-Islam made the boat defected so that the king would not seize it. In ayahs 80 to 81 is mentioned that Khidr al-Islam said, the boy's parents were believers, but we feared he would cause sorrow for them by being disobedient. And because of this, Khidr al-Islam killed the boy. And then in ayah 82, it is said that Khidr al-Islam said, the wall belonged to orphans in the town, and there was treasure buried beneath the wall. Since their father was a religious man, your Lord wanted them to reach maturity so they could dig up their treasure. So Khadr salam he fixed the wall to keep the treasure buried so that when the children reached maturity, they would be able to reach the treasure that their father had left them. Finally, Khadr salam explained, that his actions were according to the instructions of Allah Almighty. He said, What I did, it wasn't done by my own will. This is an interpretation of the things that you could not bear with patience. Verse 83 to 89 state an interesting story of Lul Qarnain, who was a king and a just ruler. Wherever he went, he did something good. He was given power and authority, and he used it to benefit people. He traveled east and north, where he found an ignorant nation who pleaded his protection against Yajuj and Majuj, And so he built a wall against Yajuj and Majuj. Verses 100 to 108 tell about the rewards and punishments in the judgment. Verse 109 tells us that if the ocean was ink, it would not suffice to write all the words of God, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words are immense, and that even the water in the ocean would not be enough to write them all. Surah Al-Kaf ends with a command to Rasulullah to inform people that he is a mortal man. I am only a man like you, to whom has been revealed that your God is one God. So whoever would hope for the meeting with his Lord, let him do righteous work and not associate anyone in the worship of his Lord. At this, Surah Al-Kaf ends, and next begins Surah Al-Maryam, in just 16. Surah Al-Maryam verses 1 to 98 are included, meaning the whole Surah Al-Maryam is included in just 16. Surah Al-Maryam is the 19th Surah of the Qur'an with 98 verses. The Surah is named after Maryam salam, who was the mother of Prophet Isa salam. The Surah was revealed in Mecca. Surah Maryam opens with verses 1 to 6 talking about the dua of Zakaria who wished for an heir. He was old, childless, and worried 
about his propagation of deen after him. In verses 7 to 15, we are told that Allah Almighty accepted the dua of Zakariya salam and granted him a pious and righteous son, which was Yahya Verses 16 to 27 state, the piety of Maryam salam and the story of the miraculous conception and birth of Prophet Isa. This emphasizes the power and majesty of Allah the Almighty. In verses 28 to 30, we learn how the community responded to Maryam salam when she went back with the baby, which was Prophet Isa. The first words Isa salam said were, I am a servant of Allah. He has given me the book and made me a prophet and made me blessed wherever I go. This is mentioned in verse 30 of Surah Maryam. Ayahs 41 to 50 of Surah Maryam briefly mentioned about the conversation of Ibrahim السلام, and his father, which was regarding the worship of idols. Ayahs 51 to 58 refer to Prophet Musa السلام, and Harun السلام, and Prophet Ismail السلام, and Idris السلام, to show the essence of the message of all prophets and that the message of all prophets was the same. As 60 of Surah Maryam says, except those who repent and believe in the oneness of Allah and His Messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and work righteousness, such will enter paradise and they will not be wronged in the least. Jannah is promised in verses 61 to 64, of Surah Maryam, for those who have taqwa, they will not hear any idle talk in it. In Ayah 66 22, Allah Almighty addressed the mushrikun rejecting their false claims regarding life after death and the day of judgment. Verse 73 to 87 continue to address the mushrikun and then warn them regarding their attitude towards disbelief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers. These verses also state the difference between the rewards of the believer and the punishment of the disbeliever. Verses 88-95 contain a severe warning to those who claim that Allah Almighty has taken a child. They have done something that is not befitting to Ar Rahman. And it is further explained that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no need of any relationship. He, the Almighty, is the most powerful. Surah Maryam ends with good news for the believers. Rahman will put love for those who believe and do righteous deeds in people's hearts. This could also mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them dearly. The surah then continues, We made the Qur'an easy in your language so you could give good news to the pious and warn the opponents with it. How many generations have we destroyed before them? Do you find any one of them alive or hear as much as their whisper? At this, Surah Maryam completes, and next begins Surah Taha. In verse 16, Surah Taha verses 1 to 135 are included, meaning the whole Surah Taha is included in verse 16. Surah Taha is the 20th Surah of the Quran with 135 verses. It is named after the letters Taha because the chapter starts with it. This Surah was revealed in Mecca, and basically refutes the incorrect beliefs of the mushrikeen about Tawheed. Verses 1 to 3 of Surah Taha tell us that the Quran is an advice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the faithful ones. Verses 4 to 8 mention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one, a sovereign king, all knowing, and has most excellent names. In verses 9 to 111 of Surah Taha, we are informed about the story of Musa a.s. Most part of the surah is immersed by the story of Musa a.s. In verse 15 of Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms the day of judgment will surely come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily the hour is coming, and I shall conceal it so that every person may be rewarded for that which he strives. The story of Musa a.s. begins when he is returning from Madian to Egypt. He is appointed as a messenger and given miracles. 
the story reflects back to the time of his birth, recalling how as a baby he was rescued from Fir'aun's murderous plan and the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon him. Musa alayhi salam made a dua when proceeding to the court of Fir'aun for the arguments, inviting Fir'aun to Islam. The dua is, قَالَ رَبِّ الشُّحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْأُقْلَةَ مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي O oh my Lord, open my heart for me and make my task easy for me and loosen the knot from my tongue so that they understand my speech. This is mentioned in verses 25 to 28. Verses 47 to 55 of Surah Allah contain a conversation between Fir'aun and Musa alayhi Verses 56 and 57 then tell the Fir'aun rejected and refused Musa salam and accused him of deception. In Ayahs 58-76, Fir'aun invited his magicians to challenge Musa salam. However, the magicians converted to Islam after realizing that Musa salam was a true prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Musa salam to lead the Bani Israel through the Red Sea in Ayah 77, and then Ayah 78 and 79 tell that Fir'aun pursued them, but he was drowned in the sea. In Ayahs 80 to 99 of Surah Taha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invited Musa alayhi salam to Mount Tur, and the Bani Israel, instead of thanking Allah the Almighty, they began disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making and worshipping a cow. We learn from Ayahs 100 to 110 of Surah Taha that the disbelievers will be punished on the Day of Judgment. But believers need not fear on that day. In Ayahs 113 and 114, after relaying the story of Musa alayhi salam, the people of Mecca are taught a lesson that the Quran is a reminder and warns of the awful consequences of rejecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We learn the story of Adam alayhi salam from verses 116 to 123 of Surah Taha. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, he asked the angels to bow before him. But the shaitan did not bow, whereas all the other angels did. Shaitan then tempted Adam alayhi salam, and Adam alayhi salam gave in, straying from Allah the Almighty. However, Adam alayhi salam repented for his mistake and asked for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness quite devotedly, for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his repentance and forgave him. In ayahs 124 to 128, we learn about the Day of Judgment and the punishment of the disbelievers. In ayahs 129 to 132 of Surah Baha, the believers are instructed to pray and not to long for worldly possessions. In the concluding verses of Surah Baha, there is a debate between the disbelievers and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The disbelievers wonder why Allah Almighty does not bring them a sign. And in the final verse, Allah instructed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what to reply to them. Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "They, we are all waiting. So you carry on waiting. You will come to learn who has followed the even path." and been rightly guided. At this, just 16 ends. And Allah the Almighty knows best. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.